In this video, I'm gonna be walking through everything you need to know on hatching eggs. And stay tuned till the end because I'll go through some important things like the humidity that's necessary for hatching eggs if you wanna use an incubator as well as how to candle eggs. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Hatching chicks is as much of an art as it is a science. Once you've discovered the best and most successful routine for you, stick with it. I'll go through two ways of approaching your hatch. Both have been successful for different people. While one method may not work for you, don't give up trying and try another method. So let's start off first with talking the two different methods, hen versus incubator. If you're lucky enough to have an annual broody hen, you might consider putting at least some of the eggs under her as long as she will accept them. My personal preference is to use a broody. It is much less stressful and time consuming. In my experience, the broody can do a better job without the fuss and worry of an incubator. She will hatch them for you and take care of the chicks without any bother. If the eggs are rare or valuable, or you don't have a broody, you may want to use an incubator only. If you're not sure what incubator to purchase, we've done a video on reviewing incubators and I'll link to that in the description. Now always get the incubator out and do a test run on it to check that everything is working properly prior to using it if you're going to use one. While you're at it, make sure to wipe down the incubator thoroughly with a disinfectant or sanitizer to make sure that it's clean and germ free. Now let's talk about your eggs. Hatching eggs from your own birds is generally more fruitful. You're able to check for fertility prior to setting your eggs if you want to and you can do a variety of eggs if you wish. The most suitable eggs come from hens over two years old. By this time, the egg factory is in great working order and producing eggs that are perfect for hatching. Selecting eggs suitable for hatching, you'll need to remember the following points. Number one, do not use eggs that are odd shapes, wrinkled, cracked, marred in any way. They will likely not hatch for you. The second thing, do not use eggs that are very pointy or ones that are round. You should be able to clearly determine the blunt end. Number three, store them at around 55 degrees Fahrenheit while you are collecting them pointy end downward and turn them at least once daily. And number four, do not use the first eggs from a new laying pullet. They will possibly not hatch well. And lastly, do not wash your eggs. Clean all dirt from the shell without removing the bloom. A simple sanitizing solution can be made for your eggs of one teaspoon of bleach added to one quart of water. Water should be above 101 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that the germ do not enter the egg through the pores in the shell. Wash gently in the solution and leave to air dry. Do not rub as this removes the bloom. Now let's talk about buying eggs. Buying hatching eggs is always a gamble, so make sure your source is reputable. Sadly, there are several scammers out there who will happily sell you hatching eggs, knowing the eggs aren't fertile or viable. Reputable dealers will give you lots of information and you should have good or excellent reviews from previous buyers. Some of the issues you likely won't know about prior to setting these eggs are the flock health, for example, lymphoid leukosis, among other disease, can be transmitted actually through the eggs. You also won't know about the overall poor quality of the flock or if there is some improper storage or if these eggs were even fertile. Although eggs are usually very well packed for their journey, many will not make it through the postal service. Even though the package may be marked as live embryos or fragile, the package will subject to shaking, tossing, and other physical contacts through the sorting process. Eggs are to be made resilient, but there is a limit to the amount of abuse they can take before they become too messed up to use. Do not use supermarket eggs. They are not fertile. Now let's talk about how to set your eggs. Before you set your eggs, here are a few things you need to do to prepare for the best chances of hatching. You will need to clean and sanitize your incubator first. You also need to run the incubator for at least 24 hours to make sure temperature is reached and maintained. If you have an automatic turner, make sure two is in good working order. If you have the money available, it is extremely useful to have a humidity monitor. They can be bought quite inexpensively through online hatching suppliers or pet stores in the reptile section. If your eggs have traveled any distance to get to you, they will need to settle for at least 12 hours pointed end down. This resting period helps to settle the contents of the egg before you start the incubation and give them the best chance of hatching. If you have collected your own eggs, make sure they are clean and stored properly prior to setting them in an incubator. Eggs lose fertility rapidly over the seventh day, so try to set them before day number seven. Candle them prior to setting. This will check for any hairline cracks in the shell that may not be visible to the naked eye. Your incubator is working and your eggs are ready. So let's go ahead and dive in. First, place the eggs in the incubator. Some incubators have holes to sit the eggs in. Others have a tray with wire separators. The eggs should be pointing in downward in the wire rack system. You can achieve this by either standing them upright or resting them on their side. Eggs should never be placed in the incubator with the pointed end up. You will need to adjust your humidity to be not less than 25 to 30% in the first 18 days, although some folks have great success with 
the dry hatch, which is very low humidity. The two major causes of failure to hatch are temperature and humidity. You'll need to check the temperature several times during the first couple days to make sure it is steady. Minor fluctuations are tolerable, but large ones can cause trouble. A small fluctuation occurs every time you remove the lid of the incubator, but the temperature should return to normal within 30 minutes or so. The normal temperature for the incubator will vary for each incubator, but for chicks, it is usually around 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's answer the question, should you do a wet or a dry hatch? Humidity can be a bigger problem. Many experts believe that dry hatching is the best way to go. The theory is that many chicks drown in the shell because the air cell is not big enough. The air cell in the egg needs to increase in size over the incubation time to accommodate the chick breathing when it pips internally. If the air cell is not big enough, the chick will not survive. Now let's get into the humidity for hatching chicken eggs. But before I do, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, so the moisture loss from eggs should equate to roughly 13% of the eggs weight before hatching. If you wish to weigh the eggs prior to hatching, this is an excellent way to determine how the weight loss is progressing. In dry hatching, the humidity is kept as low as 15 to 30 percent until the last three days if you choose to use this method you will need to candle at days 7 and 14 to determine if the air cell is large enough if the cell is progressing well stay at the humidity level you have chosen if the cell is still on the small side decrease the humidity a little bit on day 18 you need to ramp up the humidity to 65 to 70 percent the high humidity is needed to help the chicks escape from the shell and avoid being shrink wrapped a wet hatch is the most used method of incubation you try to keep the humidity at around 40 to 50 percent for the first 18 days then increase to 70 plus percent for the lockdown period most incubators give you instructions for the wet hatch method along with notes on the development of the air cell and weighing the egg if you're interested in the dry hatch method i can link to an article that point to the exact method avoid opening the incubator after day 18 this is locked down and the chicks are getting into position to hatch so don't move them around now let's get into candling eggs and how to do it this is a useful little tool that can give you vital information about chick development. It can be a bit tricky, but it's well worth the time and money invested. A good ovoscope or candler will cost you anywhere from $13 to $94. If you intend to use a lot, spend a little more money. If you are only hatching once or twice a year, a cheaper model should suffice. At day seven, you will also be able to see if the embryo is developing or not. This is the time to remove non-starters. How do you know if they are non-starters? Well, when you candle at day four or five, you should start to see some fine veins start to develop inside the egg. By day seven, you can see a blob with a dark center. This is the eye. All right, so on day 21, you should be rewarded by little peeps from the shells and some cute little fuzzballs emerging. Don't remove them right away. Let the incubator dry them off and warm them. They do not need to eat for 24 to 36 hours and their peeping will act as encouragement for the ones yet to emerge. Once they are dried and warm, you can move them over to the brooder and introduce them to food and water. So everyone really does it just a little differently. If you think about how the mother hen does it using our incubator, we seem a little bit overly fussy. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to check out this one over here. That's gonna do it for us at the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. If you found our content interesting, if you learned something new, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.